Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, mighty God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come to thank you. We come to celebrate you, Lord. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the praise. Let's give him the praise. He said, Albano, Robert Holmes, welcome. Welcome on this broadcast today. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. You alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. Welcome, man of God. Welcome, women of God. Let's get in the hour of the word. The word of God in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Father, we come to give you the glory. You alone deserve the praise, Lord. Go ahead and give him the glory. Go ahead and give him the praise. Say, Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you because you are good and your love extends to the heaven. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the broadcast of the winning word and prayer hour in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. You are worthy. You alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Sir. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, we thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. Say, Lord, thank you because you are good. Thank you because you alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. Go ahead and let's give him the thanks and give him the glory. Say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all your faithfulness there for me. Say thank you, Lord, because you have always been there for me. Come on, give him thanks and let's give him the glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, give him the praise, give him the praise, and give him the glory. Father, we bless you. We come to thank you, Father, because you you are good. We come to thank you, Lord, because there is none like you. We come to thank you because of your faithfulness. Welcome, woman of God. Welcome, man of God. Let's get in the house. Pray and give God the praise. And say, Father, we just thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you are kind. Thank you because of your mercy. Thank him. Say, great is your faithfulness. He said, great is thy faithfulness. New mercies I receive morning by morning. Say, Lord, thank you for your new mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you have been there for me. You have been there for me when everybody left me. Lord, you never leave me. Because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, let's give him the glory. Let's give him the thanks. Let's say, Lord, thank you because you are faithful. Thank you, Lord, because you are mighty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Uh, give him the glory and give him the praise in the name of Jesus. Give him the glory. Give him the praise in the name of Jesus. For our God is faithful. He alone deserves the praise. Uh, he alone deserves the glory. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks. Uh, and say, Lord, I come to thank you today. Lord, I come to bless your holy name. Lord, I come to recognize your goodness and to appreciate everything that you have done. You alone deserve the glory. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say, my hallelujah belongs to you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, my hallelujah belongs to you, Lord, because you deserve it. Say, my hallelujah belongs to you, Jesus, because you alone deserve it. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. You deserve the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I return the praise to you, Lord. Come on, give him the glory. Give him the praise. Say, Lord, I return the glory to you. I return the praise to you. Be exalted and be magnified. For there is none like you. In all of the heavens, in all of the earth, he said, there is none like Jehovah. Say, Lord, thank you in the name 
of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, thank you because you woke me up this morning and you set me on my feet and set a table before me. And thank you because of your faithfulness. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come to thank you. Thank you for a roof over my head. Thank you for I'm not on the street and not homeless because you are faithful and you are merciful to me. In the name of Jesus, God bless you, man of God, Pastor Roy. God bless you. Receive the book today. God bless you. And I know the book is going to bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Welcome, man of God, Pastor Roy. Reverend Roy Colholm from New York. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's give him praise and give him the glory. Say, Lord, I thank you. Christina Terry, welcome, woman of God. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say, Father, I declare that I have a sound mind. I declare I have a sound mind. Thank you because you've given me a sound mind. Thank you because you are faithful to me. Thank you because I have good thoughts. Not the thoughts of defeat. By faith, I am well able declare I am anointed declare that the Lord has appointed me in the name of Jesus God bless you in the name of Jesus Christina Perry Terry from Texas Dallas Texas God bless you in the name of Jesus say Lord thank you because you are faithful thank you because you've empowered me thank you because of your goodness thank you because of your mercy father I give you the glory welcome the man of God who lead Michael welcome the prophet in the name of Jesus say I am empowered Empowered by the Spirit of the Living God. Say, I am empowered by the Spirit of the Most High God. Say, Lord, I thank you because of your faithfulness. I thank you because of your mercy. I thank you because you never let me down. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. He has been there for you. He will always be there. He said, I will never leave you. He said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Thank him because he's your healer. He is your great physician. He's the one that touched your body. He's the one that heals you. He's the one that put you in your right mind and clothed you with his glory and clothed you with his goodness in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that no obstacle will stand in my way to my miracle. In the name of Jesus say every obstacle standing on my way to my next level every obstacle that is standing as an hindrance that want to hinder you from getting on to your next level say i cancel you in the name of jesus christ for every miracle god has for you there will always be an obstacle there might be some kind of barrier that is and then before you the bible says that the children of israel were close to their possession they were next to the promised land to the canaan to the land where god has promised them and they've taken a journey from generation to generation and god has been faithful to them but when they got there the bible says there was a wall the wall of jericho the wall of jericho you're going to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, every obstacle that is standing between me and my promised land, every obstacle that is standing between me and my entering into the promise that God has for me, every wall of Jericho, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree, I declare no more obstacle, no more barrier, no more hindrances, hindrances kind of stop you from getting into the promised land beside the wall of jericho the bible says that when moses the man of god the prophet has sent the 12 leaders the 12 spies to go in and survey the land and spy the land that there were 10 of them that came back and gave an evil report they gave a negative report they began to say that well the land is good god has promised us but you know we are just like a grasshopper we cannot not take the land and the bible said they made all the people all the people began to weep and all the people began to cry because of the bad report because of the bad news and i decree and declare that this is the year of good news for you no bad news in the name of jesus christ that every bad news that is coming your way any devil any negative voices that is whispering bad news whispering negativity on your way in this new year we cancel in the name of jesus christ say no more obstacle for me no more barrier for me no more entrance for me i am stepping into a new season i am going 
going in to my promised land. I am going in to where God has promised me. The Lord did not bring me this far to leave me. He brought me all the way from 2017, even into the year 2018, to bless me. God will not bring you so far to leave you or abandon you for all the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. He said, will I bring to birth and will not deliver? God will not put you through a labor pain without delivery. So you're going to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, in this second month of the year of the goodness of God, that no obstacle no barrier will be able to hinder me from fulfilling and entering to that which God has promised me. Say, I possess my possession. I enter into the promised land. I enter into the promises of God. And I will see the manifestation of the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, no obstacle will defeat me because my mind is programmed unto victory. So the people, the ten spies began to say, we cannot go. And the people began to cry the people began to wail maybe there have been people in your life that have always speaking negative that are always bringing you down that are always shutting you down that will never encourage you but i bring the word of the lord to you today in the word of encouragement and the ministry of barnabas that today the word of god is bringing edification the word of god is bringing consolation the word of god is bringing elevation the word of god is going to bring promotion your way the word of god is going to bring you victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, there is no giant that is greater than our God. Uh, there is no giant that is greater than Jehovah. There is no obstacle that can hinder God from working his miracle in your life. Uh, so you got to have a mindset, uh, a thinking of faith, uh, and say, Lord, thank you, because I know that in this season, uh, I got the victory. I got the victory in the name of Jesus. Uh, I got the victory through the blood of the Lamb. Uh, I got the victory by the power of resurrection. I got the victory because you are rose in the name of Jesus Christ. The dead, the grave could not hold Jesus down. As he has said, he is risen and he is gone to Jerusalem. He said, go and tell your brothers. The Bible said the angel of the Lord came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. You're going to pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, in this season, make your angels to roll away every stone, to roll away every obstacle to my miracle, to roll away every barrier to my next level, and sit upon it in the name of Jesus. He said the angels sat upon it, sat upon the obstacle, sat upon the stone. Maybe there have been barriers, there have been places you have received no, instead of yes, and to go forward and to progress. You're going to decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ in this season. Lord, let your angels roll away the stone, let them sat upon it in the name of Jesus, and nothing will hinder me. He said, this is my declaration, because I believe believe that God is able, God is faithful, and what God has promised to do in your life, no barrier will stop it, nothing will hinder it, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to decree and declare right now, and say, Lord, I am anointed and appointed for victory, in the name of Jesus, it don't matter what you see around you, but it is the word of God that will stand, it is the counsel of God that will stand, and the program of God that will stand. Stand. It don't matter what the enemy has said. God has already crowned you with favor. God has already crowned you with goodness. God's mercy is upon you. His hand is upon you. His favor is upon you. So you're going to decree and declare in the name of Jesus and say, I will leave and not die. In this season, I will live and not die. Maybe you have been given some kind of medical report, but the Bible says, whose report, whose report, whose report will you believe? You're going to believe the report of the Lord. 
The report of the Lord say it is well with you. The report of the Lord say let the weak say I am stronger. And let the poor say I am rich. For that is the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord according to Jesus on the cross was that it is finished. It is finished. He has paid the price. It is finished. He has paid the price. And your miracle is delivered. Your miracle is coming. Your, your next in line for the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ uh, decree and declare that I will be a miracle in the name of Jesus to somebody that I will be an encourager to somebody in the name of Jesus Christ we got too many 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 naysayers we got too many people who all they do is bring you down and talk you down and shut you down and throw the past uh, the past things you did uh, things you've done in the past life you've lived in whatever mistakes or whatever it is you've done in the past uh, and they begin to bring it up to you God don't do that uh, when God saved you when God rescued you when God delivered you when God washes you as clean by the power of his resurrection he said the whole things are passed away second Corinthians chapter 5 uh, and verse 17, he said, if any man be in Christ, uh, he is now a new creation. The whole you is gone. Uh, behold, all things are become new by the power of the blood of Jesus. Uh, decree and declare that in this season, uh, Lord, you will move me forward. You will make me a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I won't just be looking for a miracle, but I will be a miracle. I will be a blessing. I will be an encourager to somebody else uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I will be an ambassador for Christ. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. He said uh, he has given us the ministry of reconciliations. Uh, and we are ambassadors for Christ. Uh, we decree and declare that you will be a testimony. That people who knew you before will see the change that God has done in your life. Uh, and they will see the glory of God. Uh, they will see the beauty of God, they will see the hand of God, and they will see a great change that the things you used to be, the things you used to do, the place you used to be, the place you used to hang out, the whole friends you used to keep company with, they're going to see the goodness of God and the glory of God upon your life in this season, in the name of Jesus. Psalm 126, he said in Psalm 126 that when God turns around the captivity of Zion, when God turns around the captivity of Zion, Zion is the mountain of the Lord. Zion is an inheritance of the Lord. He said, when God turns around the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like them that dreamed, and then it was said among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. He said, the Lord has done great things for us, wherefore we rejoice. He said, turn around the captivity like a stream, like the stream in the south. When the stream flows, the same water that flows never flows backward. And I decree and declare in this season that the Lord will cause you to flow forward. The Lord will cause your strength to go forward. The Lord will cause your strength to shine forward. The Lord will cause your destiny to move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, give him the glory, give him the praise. Give him the glory and give him the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare that I will live as a living testimony. I will live as a sign and a wonder. He said in Isaiah 18 and verse 8 uh, 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 that I and the children that the Lord has given me we have for signs and wonder in Israel Thus says the mouth of the Lord. And so you're going to decree and declare that, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, in this season, uh, I will be for sign and wonder, no more for wondering, no more for sighing, but that for signs, uh, that the glory of God might be made manifest, uh, that the goodness of God might be made manifest, uh, that all that around me, that the lines will fall in pleasant places for me. He said the lines are fallen in pleasant places for me yea i have a goodly heritage that God will cause the lines to fall in pleasant places. You're believing God for something. You're believing God to make a way for you. And I decree and declare in this season that the Lord will cause the lines to fall in 
pleasant places, pleasant places, not in painful places, uh, not in shame and reproach, uh, but the lines will fall for you in pleasant places uh, in this season, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I declare breakthroughs are coming in my life. Breakthroughs are coming in my life. Uh, no more breakdown for me, but breakthroughs are coming in my life uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, decree and declare that the God's goodness, uh, that the miracles are going to burst for suddenly. It says suddenly in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Uh, as they gathered in the hopper room, it says suddenly that the Holy Spirit came like a mighty rotting wind. Uh, you go pray and decree and declare that Lord do a suddenly in my life this year. Do a suddenly miracle. Do a great work, O oh God, that those will see. According to that Psalm 126 that says, And now the Eden saw, the Eden, the people saw, and they seen the goodness of God and the wonders of God, and they said, Surely God has visited them. He said, They said, This is the doing of God. He said, we were like them that dream and that Eden said among themselves and the people began to confess and begin to testify and begin to, to, to attest to the glory and the goodness of God and they began to see and say that God has done a great thing for them. He said, the Lord has done a great thing for us, wherefore we are glad. Uh, the things that will wipe away your shame, uh, the blessings that will wipe away your sorrow, the blessings that will wipe away your pain, uh, I decree and declare is coming your way in this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, the Lord has done a great thing for us, wherefore we are glad. Uh, he said, turn again our captivity, whatever represents captivity in your life. Uh, I decree I declare a turning point for you in the name of Jesus. He said, the Lord turns again her captivity, and it turns it like a stream in the, he said, he that goes about weeping. Uh, maybe you've been weeping. Uh, maybe you've been sorrowing. Maybe you've been in sickness and pain, and there have been challenges and death and troubles, and all around you, things are not manifesting, uh, and things are not working out the way you wanted, uh, and things are not going out the way you planned it, and things, your expectations are not been coming into manifestations uh, he said uh, he that goes about weeping he that goes about bearing the fruit uh, uh, bearing the seed and planting the seed uh, you've done some good deeds uh, it's about time of harvest for you but it was says that he will return uh, doubtless he said uh, Psalm 126 he said he will doubtless return he will come back uh, with rejoicing there will be a time of rejoicing for you Psalm 30 and verse 5 he said the hunger of God is for a, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a moment, uh, but the goodness, his mercy, his favor is forever, it's for a lifetime. He said weeping may endure for a night, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but he said joy, joy, somebody shout joy, joy is coming in the morning. Uh, say you are coming into your season of joy, decree and declare that it's my time of joy, it's no more sorrowing for me, no more weeping for me but I'm coming into a change of season uh, in the midnight is past uh, the night season is past uh, the time of luck is past uh, the time of weeping is gone uh, I'm coming in the morning it's the dawning of a new day it's the dawning of a new day it's the dawning of a new season uh, it's the dawning of a new era in the name of Jesus Christ Bible says uh, and on uh, Matthew 27 on verse 1 um, and, uh, and uh, the women he said and when it came on the dawning of a new day on the dawning of a new day decree and declare that the night season is gone uh, the loneliness is gone uh, the season of lack is gone the season of failure is gone the season of rejection is gone he said he that goes about is bearing precious seed uh, you have seen uh, you have sowed a seed uh, you have believed god uh, you have prayed and fasted in the first month of the year and now god has seen your tears uh, god has answered your prayers uh, god has had your prayers uh, and the miracle is on the way for you. He said, he shall doubtless 
doubtless, without any doubt, is coming back uh, with rejoicing. He said he's going to come back now with bearing his precious seed, bearing precious fruits, uh, bringing the harvest, uh, and coming, say, it is harvest time for me in the name of Jesus Christ. That all the good things I've done uh, and all the blessings I have been a blessing to other people, Lord, make it now my time of harvest. Uh, send me a helper in this season. Send me those that are going to be a blessing to me. Not those that are going to be a burden to you anymore, but those that are going to bless you. Not anyone that is going to come to take advantage of you, but that God is going to bring a blessing to you in the name of Jesus Christ. For weeping is over. In the name of Jesus, minor Joseph, I decree, I declare minor, in the name of Jesus, no more weeping, no more tears. But the Bible says in Psalm that the Lord put your tears even in his bottle. He put it there for a remembrance and he's bringing smile to you. He's bringing laughter to you. He's bringing joy to you. He's wiping away that pain and taking away that sorrow and taking away that worries. Taking away all that troubles, uh, taking care of whatever the situation may be, and making a way for you where there seems to be no way. For God is a miracle walker. For God is a faithful father. For God is a good, good father. For God is a mighty one. He's a holy one of Jacob. He does mighty things. He does miracles. Uh, and he's going to make a way for you where there seems to be be no way. He's going to make a way for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, but God does not delight in his children weeping. Uh, he does not delight in his children suffering. Uh, he said, after you have suffered a while, the suffering has an expiration. After you have suffered a while, he said he will strengthen you, he will turn around the situation, and he will comfort you, and he will establish you, and he will bless you in such a mighty way that the weeping is gone, and the tears are gone, and it shall be a season of laughter, it will be a season of testimony, it will be a season of rejoicing, it will be a season of giving him the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no hopeless situation with God. The problem is just many times many people give up the hope. But I decree and declare for you that there is no hopeless situation. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. He said that you must continue in hope. Even against the hopeless situation, there is always answer in God. There is always a miracle with God. There is always a solution in God. And he said, let your hope strengthen your faith in God. Uh, never give up hope on God. Uh, never give up on calling upon Him. Uh, never give up on praying. Uh, never give up on thanking Him and praising Him and fellowship in the world and in prayer. For well, He will make a way for you. Your hope is there to strengthen you. Your hope and your faith, it will keep you going. Uh, worshiping Him and praising Him. Say, Lord, I'm thankful. Thankful for everything you are taking care of. Uh, though I do not see see it now i believe in the realm of the spirit uh, that you are moving on my behalf uh, and very suddenly and very shortly there will be an amazing manifestation there will be an amazing visitation of god there will be an amazing divine intervention of god uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, and i decree and declare because jesus walked into jerusalem uh, he got into jerusalem and he said oh no and he was sorry for jerusalem and said wow how sad it is that you have missed your time of your visitation. We decree and declare in this season uh, that the Lord will cause you to be sensitive in the spirit, that you will not speak negative, that you will not turn your back on God, uh, that you will not curse God like the wife of Job told him. He said, curse God and die. You're going to keep on to your holiness and righteousness uh, after all God has done and make you go through all this trouble. He said, why don't you just curse God and die? Anybody speaking discouragement in your life in this season, shut off, shut them up, shut them down and shut them 
out and say God is faithful and God will do amazing things and I will not miss my time of visitation I will not miss my time of intervention I will not miss my time of promotion and divine grace of God coming upon my life in the name of Jesus Christ for I believe and I declare it's my time of breakthrough it's my time of healing it's my time of favor it's my time of going further no more breakdown for me but I shall break for Isaiah he said you shall break forth to the right to the left he said even the barren that was said uh, cannot have a child he said he will become a mother of many of many and he did that and demonstrate that in the life of Anna and he said the Lord visited Hannah the Lord remembered Sarah the Lord visited and remember uh, 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 Rebecca so it don't matter what situation it is we decree and declare and say Lord remember me Lord visit me Lord do amazing work in my life Lord give me a testimony Lord do great things in my life in this season Lord answer my prayer and glorify yourself and show forth oh God and show how oh God and show your mighty works and show your mighty and, uh, and glorify yourself uh, it's all to the glory of God it's all to the beauty of God uh, the Bible says uh, in John 11 uh, and uh, Jesus said you know what we're going to uh, uh, Bethany and we're going to the house of Mara and we're going to wake Lazarus up uh, because he's been dead for four days and he said that the glory of God may be made manifest uh, I don't know what you've been through but one thing that I know one thing that I'm sure of one thing that I am so confident is that uh, God is going to show up uh, God is going to show how uh, and God is going to show forth his glory and no more breakdown for you and no more shutdown for you and no more financial a failure and hardship and death for you but God is going to heal you of every pain heal you of every emotional pain heal you of every broken heart heal you of every every disappointment heal you even in your body heal you in your heart he said he mend the broken hearted that is the God we serve he is a miracle worker he is a mighty God he is the one that fix whatever is broken he is the one that restore whatever is stolen he is the one that gives his end and gives his miracles that he might prove himself as the Lord God Almighty and a good father and a faithful one in the name of Jesus and he said let's go let's go even to Bethany and I'm glad that I was not there because now we're going to wake him up and we're going to get Lazarus back <laughs> get him back from the land of the dead get him back out of the grave and he that was dead for four days came alive in the name of Jesus I said I have the resurrection and the life and I have told you this if thou can believe if thou will believe you will see the glory of God woman of God and man of God this is the season ladies and gentlemen this is the season to put your faith to action this is the season to get on your feet and keep up and shut up all the pity party and shut up the negative sayers and shut up anything that is discouraging you and say Lord is my season right now Lord is my time right now and I will glorify you glorify yourself in my life every power that wants me to hinder my accomplishment in this city I'm coming out of the grave coming out of the grave coming out of the grave the Bible say he told them to roll away the stone I decree and declare that every stone, every stone, every stone that has been rolled in your way, the Lord is going to send his angels rolling away the stone right now, rolling away the stones in the name of Jesus. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. You are coming forth this year. You are breaking forth in this season. You are coming into your fulfillment of the glory and the beauty of God for your life. You are coming to your season of testimony. You are coming in a season of rejoicing. No more breakdown. No more grave experience for you and lack and rejection and pain and sorrow and reproach. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that every affliction, every frustration, and every troubles that have kept you down before, they are 
releasing you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and the Bible says when he called him and he that was dead, Lazarus came out of the grave and the next thing he told them, he said, loose that man, loose him, loose Lazarus and let him go, loose him and let him go in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, decree and declare that everything that have tied you down, every robe, every grave clothes, whatever keep you in a tight place, loose in the name of Jesus. For the message of the gospel said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to set the captive free. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. He has appointed me to decree the appointed year of the Lord. He has anointed me, and he has ordained me, even to bind those who are cast and, and to, to bind the brokenhearted, and to set the captive free, and to deliver the gospel of the word of God brings deliverance, uh, brings freedom, uh, brings healings, uh, brings uh, uh, blessings, uh, and set you in the holiness and the path of righteousness uh, to the glory of God. Uh, that those who knew you before are going to say, wow, this is the wonders of God. This is the doing of God. Uh, and a great transformation, and a great revelation, and a great uh, uh, promotion, and things that God is going to do in your life, uh, we show forth his glory in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Uh, say, Lord, show forth your goodness uh, in the name of Jesus. Not a trickle, not a trickle, and not a stream, but a flood of your goodness. A flood of your goodness. A river of your goodness. That when you believe in God, he said, he said in John chapter 4, he said, woman, I know you've had five husbands before, and I know what you've done in the past uh, is not what you are proud of. Uh, I know the things you have been through is not what you are proud of. Uh, I know that you are even with the sick man right now, but one thing I bring for you is that I will give you a river. I will give you such a water of the Holy Spirit uh, and a river of life, uh, and you will uh, have it dwelling from within you, dwelling from within you. When God comes, uh, the water repre represents the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit of God, the water of the Spirit and the baptism of the Spirit. Uh, and He said, uh, yeah, Give it to me, man. Give it to me, Master. So that I won't have to come here again. And then she said, no. What I'm talking about is that spiritual experience. That spiritual experience that will wipe away your shame and wipe away your sorrow and wash you clean. Clean and holy and sanctified and consecrated to the glory of God. John chapter 4. He said, and God. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 24 and 20, 23, 24. He said, and God is a spirit. Uh, God is a spirit. And those who worship him, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, and I decree and declare that every strange forces uh, holding you down that want you to, to, to keep on in the, in the mourning and in sorrowing and in the lack and in the, 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 the regret of the things that you've done in the past, uh, that the word of the Spirit of God uh, and the power of deliverance uh, going to set you free by the power of resurrection and give you the well of water. The well of water that will flow through you. That will flow from within you that will flow and no more stagnation for you no more retrogression for you no more backwardness for you no more depression for you no more discouragement for you but receive the flow of the power of the holy spirit of god flowing like a river flowing and flowing and flowing and bringing up good things and overflowing in the name of jesus psalm 23 psalm 23 says you anoint me with a oil the oil of god and it overflows and my car runs over I decree and declare your ministry in the calling and the assignment God has given you. You will not lack the heart. You will not lack the overflow. You will not lack the anointing. You will not lack the river of the word of God and the river of revelation and power of prayer and, and, and consecration and the favor of God. You will overflow. Decree and declare and say, I confess in the name of Jesus how we overflow in this city. Let the river of God, let the river of the Holy Spirit 
spirit. Let the river of life, let the water of life run and overflow in my life. Overflow and overflow and wash away every pain. Wash away every sorrow. Wash away every filthiness. Wash away everything I've done in the past. And John chapter 4, that woman, the Samaritan woman went uh, even to the town of Samaria where she came from. And the Bible says all the men, all the men that have molested her, all the men that have speak bad about her, all the men that have never looked out to her like a honorable woman. And she went about and told all the men and all the men began to follow her. He said, come and see, come and see, come and see a man that makes a difference. Come and see right now. A man that is not like you men. Come and see right now. A man that ever told me everything, 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 everything that I've ever done. A man that is the Savior. A man that is the Messiah. A man that is the Son of God. A man that is going to give us life. A man who has brought salvation to mankind. And all the men came in that place where you've had trouble, in that place where you have sorrow, in that place where you've been known for evil and bad and bad recommendation, God is going to change your story around in this season. Uh, God is going to change it around. Uh, and those same people who have looked down on you, they're going to see the glory of God. Uh, they're going to see the beauty of God. They're going to see the power of the resurrection, the transformation of God over your life. Uh, and they're going to come to see and give their life to the Lord uh, in this season uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, decree and declare and say no more pain for me no more shame for me and the river of god is overflowing in every direction in my life uh, overflowing in the life of my children uh, no more sickness and no more pain and no more sorrow in the name of jesus christ uh, bible says in the book of isaiah that god declared the hand from the beginning god is a god that knows the hand and the hand of the book says that you are an overcomer is that we overcome him by the blood of the lamb we overcome. You are more than an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. You are not a victim. You are not a, a, a castaway. But he said, uh, this is Zion. This is a wound nobody. And then he said, it's a castaway. God is changing all of that uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, God is giving you a new bill clean of health uh, in the name of Jesus. He is the Holy Rapha. He is the, the great physician. Uh, and he will heal every situation what even the doctors cannot do ah we serve a god that is more than able that can do all things exceedingly abundantly above what we can whatever you can think or ask uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, and a flood of healing and a flood of river of god that will overwhelm you with his goodness overwhelm you with his favor overwhelm you with his mercy is coming your way in this season uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, declare no more breakdown for me declare no more uh, shame for me declare no more no more trouble to me in the name of jesus christ uh, and every arrow that the enemy has fired into your life uh, will return back to sender uh, in in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and I decree and declare that the Lord uh, he will he said come unto me how you will labor and all you who are heavy burden a uh, uh, heavy burden uh, burdens are rolled away at Calvary burdens are rolled away at the, at the feet of Jesus uh, the burdens are rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and every kind of evil report you have gotten the lord is going to visit you and turn it around in the name of jesus giving you victory in the court of law giving you victory in the place of defeat uh, giving you his mercy in the name of jesus giving you freedom in the place of bondage uh, in the name of jesus uh, and dumbfounding promotion is that promotion comes not from the south from the west from the east uh, but promotion comes from the north side promotion comes from the heaven uh, is that we have come to jerusalem we've come to mount zion in the city of our God in the north side while God lives in the north side in the city of our God is a promotion come from the Lord who makes the heavens and the heart and everything you need to move forward this year God is going to make provision for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is going to make a way for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 13. And he said Jehovah Elrohi. We mean the God who sees me. He was talking about Hagar. That's bound woman. And the strange woman. They call her the bound woman. Whom uh, 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 Sarah had made Abraham to have a baby. He 
from. And then he said, get the woman to go. And when she went, uh, and the Bible says she, she, she was stranded in that situation. And the God who sees her, the God who sees Aga. Maybe you are suffering from some kind of consequences uh, or, 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 of some other people's decision or some even time the, the, the decisions of yourself. Uh, you make stupid decisions uh, and you don't think without, without, without listening and taking instruction from God. Uh, and the Bible says uh, 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 it, it was Haga and she looked upon to God and the God will see me. said Jehovah Heroi. The God will see me. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 13. God sees you. God knows your pain. He said in Hebrew we do not have a high priest who cannot feel what we've been because he also walked in our shoes uh, he knows what we've been through he knows uh, he, he said he can he can have that same feeling he has had that same kind of pain and he's going to touch you and he's going to heal you because the God who sees you Jehovah Heroi is going to encourage in this season I bring a word of encouragement to somebody that don't you give up on God God don't give up on you and his time is working for you there's a miracle coming your way there's a good news coming your way there's a visitation coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ and everything that I've been holding you bound, everything that I've been holding you back, we decree and declare no more, no more shame for you in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. For the God who sees you, Genesis 16 and verse 13, he sees your pain, he sees your sorrow, he sees your disappointment, he sees your lack, he sees the desire, he sees your dreams and the desires and what next you want to do for him. And he's going to help you because he helped Hagar. He helped her and they allowed the boy Ishmael to die. He had the mercy. He had this goodness even upon the boy. It doesn't matter what it is. If you have messed up and you have done wrong. When you come to the Lord and repent. When you come to the Lord and confess. When you come to the Lord in the humbly 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 and say lord have mercy on me god is going to show his mercy on you god has his mercy he has mercy in the name of jesus christ uh, it don't matter who gave up on you it don't matter who left you it don't matter who wrote you off uh, god will not never he said i will never leave you and i will not forsake you in the name of jesus christ psalm 113 113 psalm 113 verse 7 and 8 uh, Psalm 113 verse 7 and 8 uh, that is the walking wonders of our God uh, he said he rail up the poor out of the dust uh, it don't matter what dust you're being in how low can you get from the dust uh, you were made from the dust uh, and we are going back to the dust uh, but when you are living you are not supposed to be in the dust uh, so he said he raised him out of the, uh, the poor out of the dust uh, you, know, you, 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 you you everybody's wrote you off and you put you in the dust uh, and God uh, you, you know you cannot bury a living man so you ain't going back to dust no dust to dust and hashes to hashes for you right now as you are living he said there is hope there is hope for uh, 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 <laughs> a, a dog a dog that is alive he said is better than a dead lion decree and declare that I'm alive I'm dead yet you can't bury me and so I'm not going to the dust for it's not over but God has his hand upon me I've got message to give I've got testimony to give I've got a song to sing I've got a dance and yet not dance to the glory of God I've got places to go that I've not been yet I've got the message of the gospel to take the places I haven't done yet my assignment is not over yet my, 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 my life is not over yet your marriage may be over but your life isn't over the man may die or left you and your life isn't over yet the children may left you but God didn't leave you yet friends may leave you but God didn't leave you yet say I'm going to the dust now I may be poor now but God is going to visit me God's going to visit me Micah chapter 7 and verse 7 he's a faithful God and he said rejoice rejoice Micah 7 and 8 Micah 7 7 and 8 he said rejoice not over me my adversary do not rejoice over me for if I fall God you're gonna show the light to me you're gonna shine the light to me he said if I walk in darkness God is gonna shine 
a life for me. It don't matter what they did against you. They can count you out. You know, in the wrestling and the, uh, the competition, the, when, when, when the referee began to count, uh, you might be, you might be down but you're not counted out yet uh, he said uh, uh, psalm 113 and verse 7 and 8 uh, he raised up the poor so when you're down god gonna raise you up uh, if you're poor god's gonna raise you up uh, he's gonna change your situation he's gonna heal you he's gonna deliver you deliver you from every affliction and every program of the enemy micah 7 verse 7 and 8 uh, he said Re do not rejoice over me my adversary do not rejoice over me my enemy for when you think you you, you fulfill your assignment god gonna step in He's going to show me the light. He's going to raise me up. He's going to do not laugh over me. Those who have said, uh, oh, well, it's over. It's done. Uh, no, 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 no. God got the final say over your life. Uh, not them people. Not them haters. Not your adversary. No man, no woman got a say over your life. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, he said, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. He knows the plan and the thoughts that he has towards you. That good, uh, good, 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 good. Uh, say good is coming to me for god has a good plan for me for god has a good thought for me he said and i we rejoice in the plan of God. Uh, is that to give you a future and a hope uh, and not destruction and not defeat uh, in verse 12. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 12. He uh, said, then you're going to pray. You're going to pray. You want the good plan of God? You're going to pray. You want the good purpose of God uh, and the future? You're going to pray. You're going to say, Lord, uh, I'm calling upon you. It's me. It's me. It's me. Oh, Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. I'm standing in the place of prayer. I'm standing crying out unto you. He said in Psalm uh, he said, morning and noon and afternoon will I cry unto the Lord, will I pray unto the Lord, and he will hear me, and he will answer me. God answers prayer. Psalm 50 and verse 15. He said, you will call upon me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50 and verse 15. Uh, you will call upon me in the day of trouble, and I'm going to answer you, and I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to turn around your sorrow. I'm going to turn around your situation and you will glorify me. Our God wants to be praised. I praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, and praise him. Uh, say it's me, Lord. Uh, it's me, Lord. Uh, standing in the place of prayer. It's not my grandmama, not my grandpapa. It's not my daddy or my mommy. It's not my brother, my sibling, my sister. But it's me. It's me. It's not my best friend. Uh, it's not even my foes and enemy. Lord, it's me. It's me that's standing in the place of prayer and I know that you have some prayer Jeremiah 33 3 Jeremiah 33 3 said call upon me call upon me and come unto me ha, and, uh, uh, and I will show you great and mighty things uh, which you do not know there are mystery God want to show you there are great things God want to show you say Lord show me show me show me your glory show me your goodness show me your beauty show me the way to the next level show me oh god was gonna be helpful to me in this season show me i'm back in some 133 one 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 three one 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 three one one three seven and eight he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the needy out of the dunghill and he may set him with the princes even with the princes of his people that's the divine changer a paradigm changer a, a, a miraculous changer a change of story from your story and sorrow story and dust story and needy story and poverty story it's changing him and changing and changing uh, and taking you to the palace uh, and setting you among the princes uh, and setting you among those who will be a blessing to you in this season in the name of Jesus Christ no more profitless work for you but that you will enjoy the goodness of God you will enjoy the blessings of God you will enjoy the favor of God you will enjoy the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ I cancel every power of witchcraft and bewitchment and every warlock and curses and spells and everything that voodoo and magic that they've done against you we cancel in the name of Jesus Christ. Numbers 23 and verse 23. Numbers 23 and 23. There is no enchantment. There is no divination. There is no magic. There is no curses. There is no generational curses. There ain't nothing that can hold you down. Uh, I love that Southern Gospel saying, there ain't no grave that can hold you down. He said, he raised him out of the dust. Ain't no grave that can hold you down. He raised you out of the dust. They raised you out of the dunghill. Raised you out of what all the people that have given up hope and you have forgotten about you and they wrote you off. God is changing that situation. God is able to change your story. 
glory and he will glorify himself in the name of Jesus Christ and put to shame every warlock every voodoo and every magic and every witchcraft and every curses and every haters he will put them to shame in this season in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare all the blessings of God is coming say Lord your blessing is coming say Lord I receive it Lord I thank you for it Lord I bless you Lord Father I fear my situation oh God oh let God arise Psalm 68 Psalm 68 and verse 1 the let God arise and let all his adversaries be scattered. Psalm 68 and verse 1. Say, Lord, arise for me, O God. I ain't got nobody else but you. But when I have you, I know I got everything. When I have you, I know you have all the power. I know you got everything in your control. I know that you're going to do everything to make me to smile again. And make me to laugh last over every adversary and every negative ones. And everything they said against me. All those who have lied to me. All those who have failed and spread gossip and backbite and backstab. Lord, I got you, oh God, that you will arise and vindicate me. And I got you, oh God, that you will arise, oh God, and do a great and mighty thing in my life. And I know that I will not break down anymore. I know that I'm coming alive. Ezekiel chapter 37. Every dry bone coming alive. Every dry bone coming alive. And they given up hope on you. They said you are dry and dead and gone and gone in the valley of the dry bones. But God said to the prophet Ezekiel, can these bone leaves? And the prophet was such a smart man. And he said, Lord, I know that you know where all things. And I'm going to just speak what you tell me to do. And I'm not going to speak no negative anymore. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to speak. I'm going to declare what you want me to say. And Ezekiel 37, he began to tell him. He said, now what you going to do step by step lines upon line and precept upon precept he began to tell him and giving him instruction this is a season that you're going to listen this is the season you're going to listen and tell god lord i'm ready to listen to you i want to discern your voice i want to follow the word your instruction step by step line upon line and he began to they say called the bones and and all the collar bone and the skull and the and the and the chest bone and the rib king and all the skeletons and all them begin to join one to another and they begin to join one to another everywhere you've been defragmented uh, everywhere you've been displaced uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, the soul so so tied and so fragmented and your soul you are you're living in Alaska but your soul is in California uh, and your mind is scattered all around the place uh, and uh, you 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 you, you just to go get a scattered thoughts and you can't put yourself together anymore but God is going to put you together God's going to speak over your life and his word is the final not the word of the enemy not what they said not what they broke the lie on you not what they did they misrepresented and, and quote your words out of context and say God you're so stupid things and I've said things unbelievable things about you and they just for fabrication and manipulation and all sort of things they said and the Bible says uh, uh, Ezekiel 37 and he began to speak you're going to speak the word you're going to stand the word you're going to prophesy the word you're going to pray the word there is power in the word uh, 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 and the Bible says after everything came together and the bones uh, uh, and all the flesh came upon them and all the uh, everything they came back together from the valley God's going to take you out of the valley God's going to take you out of that shame going to take you out of that pain going to take you out of that sorrow going to take you out of that depth going to take you out of that hard place going to take you out they go pat even the Red Sea for you. He said, the Egyptians you see today, uh, Exodus chapter 14, he said in 14, uh, uh, be still, be still, be still. What does it mean to be still? To stay upon God, uh, to stay and focus on God. Uh, don't you look at the enemy, don't you look at the Pharaoh and the, and the horses and the chariots that are chasing after you. Focus on God. Uh, quit looking at that doctor's report. Uh, quit looking about that, that, that bad that medical report uh, and that depth and that, and that eviction 
imagine and that whatever the situation, a negative situation, and your children not behaving well and giving you headache, uh, quit looking at that. Uh, keep looking at the promise of God. Keep looking at the beauty of God. Keep looking at the goodness of God. Keep looking at what the Word of God says. Because it's the Word of God that will stand. It is the Word of God that will give you the victory. It is the Word of God that will give you true and make you get true and will change and change and change and change and turn around the situation. Uh, 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 and Ezekiel. After all the dry bones and everything was come together and they were there, but there was no breath in them. And the Bible says, uh, 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 and the word of God declares, it says, prophesy to them again and call the winds, uh, the winds of a spirit, the, the breath of a spirit. Call it up, call it up, call it up. Uh, now begin to call the blessings. Uh, he said, call in the things that be not as they was. Uh, and Abraham, even though he was weak and, and, and he, he, against all hope, uh, he did not stagger. He did not stagger. He didn't pick negative. He believed God uh, that God can raise even Isaac, uh, even if he has to cut him, uh, that God God can raise him up. Uh, you're going to walk the walk of faith. Uh, you're going to speak the word of faith. Uh, you're going to decree and declare the word of God and the promises of God and see it come to fulfillment in your life uh, without speaking negative in this season uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Ezekiel began to say, uh, and call the breath of God and call the wind of God and the wind of God. It was that same wind of God, the wind of the spirit of God uh, that came in the upper room in the heart chapter 2, for he said in George chapter 2, I'm going to pour out my spirit, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon all human, upon all men and women and boy and girl, and upon even the male servant and the male servant, uh, and all the half part of the spirit. Uh, and he said in Acts chapter 2, and then they were gathered in the half room in one accord, in one accord, you're going to be in one accord, in one accord with the word of God, in one accord in unity, in unity, and say, Lord, I ain't going to let nothing that I've seen the physical change my faith in you. I'm going to let what they say, oh, oh, you, 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 you say you're a Christian, and then you, you're going through all this so ways your God. Uh, you're going to stay on the promise of of God. You're going to stay on the word of God. You're going to stand on the word of God because God's promises never fail. The Bible don't have an expiration day. From uh, uh, eternity to eternity, word of God remains the same. He said the grass wither and the flower fade. But the word of our Lord, Isaiah 48, Isaiah 40 verse 8, he said the grass wither and the flower fade. But the word of God, the promise of God, the word of God, he said, will never fail. And the word of God will always bring to pass. And Ezekiel began to speak, Ezekiel 37. And there arose a mighty army out of the dry bone, out of the dry situation, out of the trouble you've been through. There is something mighty coming in. There is a great testimony the coming in. There is something mighty coming in. There is a mighty ministry coming in. There is a mighty deliverance coming in. Out of the shame you've been through. Out of the garment of the world, the depression and, and, and spirit of evidence you've been through. There is a mighty thing coming in. Uh, what, 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 what the Lord does not allow to kill you is going to make you stronger. Uh, and every giant that you have confronted, they're going to fall and they're going to die. And they, 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 they're gonna hind, they, they cannot hinder you from entering into your promises. The wall of Jericho the obstacles are going to give way to your miracles uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Ezekiel 37 and instead the, the, the house of Israel and you're going to be like a mighty hammy, mighty hammy, and a mighty hammy in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and every hardship and every pain and every sorrow and every tears and every weeping that you have had, uh, the Lord's going to turn everything around make you a living testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, in the name of Jesus, give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Uh, for the Lord is changing your situation. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, amen, 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 amen. Somebody shout glory to God in the highest and say, Father, thank you, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I need you to agree with me. I said, Lord, send your word like a thunder. Send your word like fire. Send your word. He said, like a fire shot in my bones. Uh, he said, is my word not like a hammer? Is my word not like a fire? It's not like my word. Uh, uh, is his word. And it's like a hammer. He said, it's like a, a brick. A, a brick in every pain. And every, every, every stones. And every obstacle. And every barrier. And he said, it's word like a fire. That burns off everything the enemy sent your way. Go burn it off in the name of Jesus. You use fire to fight fire. The fire of God consumed the fire of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, you said, for our God is a consuming fire. 
Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire of the Lord consume every darkness in your life. Say, Lord, uh, the fire of God going to consume every obstacle, consume every pain. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, amen, 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 amen. Give him praise and shout glory to God uh, and say, Lord, thank you. In the name of Jesus, speak your word to me, Lord. Uh, say, Lord, uh, open the eyes of my heart. Uh, I want to hear you. I want to see you, Lord. Uh, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to have an encounter in your world today. I want to have an encounter with you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. And my life will not be the same. I want to get a revelation of your word that will change the situation in my life. In this season. In this hour of winning world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give him the glory. And give him the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Give God the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Winning Word and Prayer Hour in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm getting in the Winning Word right now, and we'll get in the Word of God and get back in a prayer hour in the name of Jesus. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 3, 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31 from verse 6 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 31 from verse 6 to 8. And the word I'm bringing today is be an encourager be an encourager be an encourager function in the ministry of Barnabas function in the ministry of encouragement in the name of Jesus Christ we got too many people speak bad things in our world you don't find no no nobody can encourage you anymore uh, you, you you like mr. Rogers Mr. Rogers, and back in the days, I was in the neighborhood. Uh, you're going to speak an encouragement. You're going to be in a Mr. Mr. Barnabas, uh, speak an encouragement in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and being a Barnabas is better than being a Mr. Rogers and Miss Rogers in the name of Jesus Christ. Be an encourager. Speak the word of encouragement. And I'm talking about good things. Good things. Encourage the good things. And when you see the bad things, speak the correction in love. Not criticism. Destructive criticism. And so many people, all they do is all they, all they can see is bad, 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 bad. The word of God says to the pure. To the pure. All things are pure. But to those who, who they, their eyes, uh, they, they, they have a rose-colored glasses on. Uh, you got to change that off uh, and see the good in things. Uh, and see the good in others. Uh, and speak and encourage the good. Uh, and where you need to speak correction, don't do it with rude and harsh and, and condemnation. Uh, he said, uh, uh, speak the truth in love. Uh, when you speak the truth, but the attitude and the, the, the harsh and the rude and the, the destruction and the gossip and the tearing down. No, no, no. That is not in the spirit of love. Uh, that is not in the spirit spirit of God. You're going to speak and correction in love. But I want to talk about being an encourager. And where you need to correct, you got to do it in love. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's give him the glory. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6 to 8, it was talking about the transition. Now Moses was completing his assignment. He was going to go half the glory and God has to add him to transfer uh, the the, the, the mantle and the, the, the pattern and the leadership onto Joshua. you got to know something. That someday, no matter how long you leave, even if you make it to 120, you're going to go out of here. So you got, what, what are you going to be remembered for? What are you going to say about you? I'm not talking about all those uh, funerals and, and, and uh, directors that they just say, he's a good man, he's a, he's a good man, and they know you was not. They just lying, but 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 we're talking about what are you gonna be remembered for? You don't have to be a preacher to be an encourager. You don't have to be uh, uh, have a church and a ministry before you can encourage people. Before you can be a tool and encourager to people, what are you gonna be remembered for? And the Bible says that Moses was going in transition, and there was gonna be a transfer of power, a transfer of leadership, a transfer of the anointing, even to Joshua. And remember, Joshua has been a servant of Moses. Joshua had always been there when Moses goes up. To the mountain of the Lord, a mountain uh, or, or, or Bethel, a mountain of Horeb, a mountain of the Sinai, and, and Moses and Joshua had walked together. There's the, you're going to pray that, Lord, in this season, send me, help me to connect with the people, with the right people, with the right spirit. Uh, I tell you, God will open your eyes to see. Most of the people you call your best friends are are your best enemies uh, well, uh, and God is going to open your eyes to be able to see and to be able to know who is going to be a blessing to you and connect you with the people of the right spirit uh, and the people that will you will be able to serve together to the kingdom in the name of Jesus uh, he said in Deuteronomy 1 verse 6 and 8 
and be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with these people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and shall give it to, you, to, to them as an inheritance. And the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you, and he will be with you, and he will not fail you, nor forsake you. Do not, be, do not fear or be dismay. Now, you cannot walk the walk of faith with fear. Faith and fear do not operate together. So you're going to say, Lord, help me this year. I will not have be afraid of the bad news. I will not be afraid of every negativity and everything that goes on around and what you see in the physical. You're going to ask that the Lord will help you to be strong. He said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. How can you be strong in the Lord? I tell you, there's times you need the strength of God. You need the word of God to keep you strong in this world. The bad news and breaking news and all sort of shootings and troubles all around. And and uh, as you're coming out of one, you get in to hear some other emergencies and some other troubles. And you've got to be strong. We live in a world of a survivor of the field test. Because the devil is all, all out there. It's no time for weakling. You've got to feed on the word of God and be strong and be courageous. And let your faith be in God. And say, Lord, I know that I will not be afraid. I know that I will not dismay. I know that you have made a promise and your promise will stand. And your counsel will stand. And what God has said is going to do your life is going to do you got to stick to god you're going to stand by god it don't matter what happens it don't matter what the people say it don't matter what they're doing it don't matter what they gossip it don't matter what they report and and all that come against you what matters is that you're standing with in right courage with god and standing with god Standing upon his word and standing and no be tremble and not be afraid. Or when God goes with you, it don't matter what the people do. It, 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 it don't matter the enemies. He's going to give you the enemies. He's going to give you the promise. He's going to give you what God has promised. He is a faithful God. And the Lord told him to call Joshua and to, 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 to encourage him. God said, encourage him. Encourage Joshua. Encourage him. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 38. Deuteronomy chapter 1. 1 and verse 38, Deuteronomy chapter 1, and it said, Joshua, the son of one, who stand before you, he shall enter there, he shall enter there in the promised land. So what are you going to do? Encourage him, for it will cause Israel to inherit it. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 38, God wants to encourage to you to encourage others uh, that are going to go further. Who are you pouring into? Who is the next generation you are building up? Uh, who are you passing the manual on to? Who are you believing God to... Uh, uh, I love that movie, the war room movie, the war room, by those two brothers, and that, that lady, that the, she was believing God, uh, that she need just one person, and God brought, brought to her, the other uh, Priscilla, and, and she was able to, 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 to mentor her, who are you pouring into, who are you training, who are you, who are you sharing your testimonies, and, uh, and building, and trying to be a mentor onto, you got to have somebody in your life, that you are, you're developing, and you're passing the gift of God, and, and, and fellowship together, and about say, iron sharpens iron, iron sharpens iron, just like the continent of a friend sharpens another. You must have got to be a friend, you gotta be a friend. To have a friend, you gotta be a friend. There are those people who are not friendly, there are people who are not just friendly, they they they're so bitter and they're so ain't nobody gonna be your friend when you when you speak negative and and, and how crazy. You wanna say, Lord, no, no, help me. There's gotta be a transformation in you. There must be a light in you, there must be the glory in you, there must be the beauty of God in you. Say so you are the salt of the world, and you gotta be a, 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 a good salt. Uh, he said, not, not, not when a salt is, is saltless and stubborn and stupid, uh, he said, it's going to trample on the feet uh, and it's useless, not good for no nothing. Uh, well, uh, you, you're nagging and you're condemning and you're criticism and blah, 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 biting and blah, 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 stabbing people. It's not gonna, nobody going to want to be around. I don't want to be around the, the, the gossip. I don't want to be around people who all they do is tear you down and blah, 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 and talk about it. No, no, no. I don't want it. I want my spirit to be connected to God. I got, Bible says, every idle word, 
every negative word, everything men shall give account of, everything you do, everything you say, and be careful what you say, be careful what you think about others, be careful what you do, because it's going to come back to you. It's a seed in, the, in, in, in what you do. But it said, Joshua, the son of Norm, who stand before you, he shall enter there. Encourage him. Encourage, encourage, speak the word of encouragement. A good word, a good word. Let people come to you and know that their spirit is going to be uplifted. I, 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 I'm careful who I get around, who I talk to, you're going to start talking rubbish, I'm picking the signal of the spirit. You're going to, no, 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 no. I want to be up there, I want an uplifting. I want somebody who's going to uplift my spirit. You don't come here and speak negative, pick trash. No, I take the junk out of the trunk and take all the trash out. No, you ain't no room for stupid negative the chatter, no gossip. I don't want to hear what you got to say about somebody else if you can't say it before him. Uh, I, I, I don't want to hear no nothing. Uh, I be, if it's not good news and good report to the glory of God, uh, shut up your mouth and take your gossip to the next place. Uh, uh, and the Bible says, uh, encourage him. Encourage him. You want to fulfill the plan of God. You want to fulfill the testament of God. You want to fulfill the plan, purpose of God. You want to be known for good report. You want to be known for testimony. Even if they've done wrong, even if they've done bad things, uh, it's not in your place. You are not the judge. You are not the God Almighty. You are not the head behind uh, and the inspector uh, CIA of God. Uh, you, you're not the uh, Holy Spirit police uh, inspector general. No. Let let pray for the people. Pray. Pray that God will help them to see and if you're led to speak to them, do it in the spirit of love, in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 31, Deuteronomy chapter 20, 31 and verse 23. It said, then he commissioned Joshua, the son of Nom, and he said, be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. You want God to be with you? You're going to be good. You're going to speak good. you going to, you, how do I know that God is with you? No, you go, there must be a goodness around you. There must be a fresh, fresh fragrance and, and, and the aroma of Christ around you. Not, not bitterness and anger and, 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 and chatting and destruction and ch chatting about people and or bringing them all down. No. God's not going to be with you like that. All right? Now, Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, and after Moses had handed over to him from Joshua chapter 1, we began to see, he said, get up, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. And he said in Joshua 1 verse 5, he said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life just as I was been with Moses. I will be with you and I will not fail you nor forsake you. The promise be strong and be courageous for you shall give these people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. There is a possession God's got for you. There is a testimony God's got for you you. There is a place God got for you. There is an assignment God got for you. You've got to be strong. You're going to be courageous. You're going to be stand upright and stay connected and connected with the power of the Holy Spirit at all time and say, Lord, I got to fulfill my assignment. I got to fulfill my vision. I got to fulfill my mission. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to fail. I don't want to be a discourager. I want to be a man that speaks your word of a consolation, your word of edification, your word of promotion and blessing and increase and faithfulness uh, and, and righteousness and holiness. Uh, I, I don't want to be a part of uh, 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 people who put doom and gloom and gloom and doom, 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 doom. No, 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 no. No. I want to bring people out of the gloom. I want to bring people out of the doom. I want to bring people and prepare them for your kingdom. Bring them out of the darkness uh, and tell them that there is hope in God. Uh, and tell them that there is hope for the tree that it is cut down. In that by the saints of water, his tender fruit will brood again. And you will rise again and he will shine again uh, by the saint of the water by the saint of the water there is hope there is hope for a tree for a living dog is better than a dead lion and uh, and the beauty of god and the god don't you give up that god can make a way for you that god can forgive that god can rescue that god can deliver that god can give you a new be a, a new beginning with him and it will cause them to enter in the land. Uh, God is faithful and his promises never fail in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we talk about Barnabas. Barnabas is in the book of uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, the book of uh, Acts chapter 4. You're going to read Acts chapter 4 from verse 32, from verse 32 to 36. Uh, it said, now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. One house. One house, one heart, one soul. 
in the name of Jesus. He said, neither did anyone say that anything of the things, uh, it was their own, but they had all things in common. They had all things in common, and with great power, the apostle gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, uh, and great grace was upon them. You want the grace of God? You're going to spend the gr extend the grace to other people. The grace you extend to other people is going to come on you, and with great grace. Uh, and said, nor was there anyone among them who lack, and all were possessions of the land of houses, sold them, and brought them up the proceeds to the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each one as anyone had had need. And Joseph, who also, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated, son of encouragement, a Levite, of the country of Cyprus, and having land sold it and brought it to the money, the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. You know when you begin to talk about money, when you begin to talk about money, because some people are gonna stay, they're gonna they're gonna leave this broadcast now. They're gonna leave. They're gonna shut it off. They say the preacher wants money. No, I don't ask for money, but when God leaves on your heart to be a blessing to people, you do it. Not because you're doing it to the people, you're doing it to God. He said, He will give you, give God is the one that blesses you. If you give a cup of water to the prophet in the name of the prophet, in the name of the Lord, He said, God is going to reward you. God is going to bless you. So you, it, it, you, well, you cannot be an encourager without giving. That's the point. And, and, and the Bible says, In the hearts of apostles, they were sharing all things in common. Acts chapter 4, from verse 32 to 37. And they shared everything in common, and they gave. And Joseph, brother Joseph, his name was Joseph, but then the, they, they gave him a name, and the apostle called him the son of encouragement, because he's always in, encouraging orders. He's always bringing encouragement. He's always bringing encouragement. Encouragement in the name of Jesus. And they gave encouragement one to the other. And the Bible says, uh, even when Saul had the encounter with God on the Acts chapter 9 and the road to Damascus, and all Peter and all the apostles did not believe in him, the Bible says it was Barnabas that went in and took Paul and brought him to the apostles. Acts chapter 9 verse 27. Acts chapter 9 verse 27. But Barnabas took hold of him, he's talking about Paul, Saul of Tatus, and brought him to the apostles and described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road of Damascus, Acts chapter 9, verse 27, and that he had talked to him, and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. So Paul became a connected with Barnabas, because Barnabas believed, and he was an encourager. I, I declare for you that you, you need a Barnabas in your life, and you need to be a Barnabas in somebody else's life, uh, in the name of Jesus. Somebody who's going to encourage you, somebody who's going to be there to pray for you, somebody who's going to be there to uplift you, somebody who's going to be there to share with you, in the name of Jesus. If you ain't known God, no Barnabas, I'm sorry, you got to believe God for the Barnabas this year. You cannot be all by yourself without a Barnabas. You need the calling of a Barnabas. You need an encouragement at every point in time. Moses became an encourager to Joshua, and he encouraged him because God said, do so, and hand it over to him in the name of Jesus. He said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, he said, therefore, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, are you doing that? Are you encouraging one another? Or you're bringing one another down? You've got to encourage one another. That's what the Word of God says. Not bring one another down. Encourage one another as you are doing. Are you doing the encouragement? Or are you discouraging people? I'm going to get to the point where I'm share with you some group of people that you find in the church and then you're going to find your group. You're going to find your group. Now he said in Acts 11, Acts 11 verse 27 to 30, he said, Now at this time, uh, some prophet came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. We need prophets that will bring encouragement. We need prophets that will bring edification. We need a New Testament prophet that will come from Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the city of God, uh, the house of peace, uh, and bring a word. Uh, and he said, uh, as they were worshiping, they were praising God. He said, and the Holy Spirit said, separate for me, Paul and Barnabas, to the work that I have called them to do. And the Holy Spirit is going to speak through the prophet uh, with encouragement, with uh, 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 edification, with comfort uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and they prayed for them, and they commissioned them on that assignment. You need that prophet in your life. You need that Barnabas in your life that will speak 
the word of God and speak correction in love and speak edification and give direction to the next level in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and, and Acts chapter 13 verse 2, Acts chapter 13 verse 2, it said, while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, and fasting and praying and ministering to the Lord and fellowship, he said, the Holy Spirit said, Acts chapter 13 verse 2, he said, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me, Barabbas and Saul, for the walk to which I have called them. Say, Lord, set me apart this year. Set me apart, O God. Set me apart to be a Barnabas. Set me apart for the work you've called me. I don't want to miss my portion. I don't want to miss my summon. I don't want to miss your calling upon my life. Uh, uh, set me apart and connect me with the, the right people, the right spirit, the right company that will help me to fulfill the assignment that you have called me to do. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, from verse 22 to 31. Acts chapter 15, verse 22 to 31. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church uh, to choose men from among them to send to Antioch and Paul with Paul and Barnabas and Judas called Barnabas and Silas, leading men among the brethren. You need the right company. Acts chapter, chapter 15, verse 22 to 31. You need the right Barnabas, the Barnabas company, the Barnabas people. You need them in your life in the name of Jesus. You need the Joshua that will help take on to the next generation that will bring forth the fulfillment of the dreams and the vision and the prayer and the fasting and all the things that God could not do in your lifetime to carry the pattern on, to carry the calling on uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 uh, uh, and verse 36 and 30 to 39. Uh, he said, after some days Paul said to Barnabas, let us return to visit the brethren in every city which we have proclaimed the word of the Lord and see how they are. How they are. That's follow up. Follow up. Acts chapter 15, verse 36 and 30 to 39. And Paul and Barnabas, they went back on the second missionary journey. And all the brethren and all the people that they have spoken with and all the people they have met on the way, and they encourage them again. When you, when you minister the word to people, you follow them up. Uh, you follow them up uh, and you see how that they are doing. Not that just, well, just uh, well, ministering to people and letting them go. No, you've got to follow them up and disciple and disciple and follow them up uh, and uh, phone call and a text message and a email there and, uh, and encourage them in the Lord and be sure that they are still there in the Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus. And Galatians chapter 2 Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1 he said, then after an interval of 14 years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas taking Titus over or taking Titus along with us uh, in 14 years. You need a, a relationship that's fine. Not, not, not the people that are your friend today. They're going to be friends today and then two days and they, they're not your friend anymore. They, <laughs> they're going to be your friend and they unfriend you. Uh, uh, no, no. A friend that's going to unfriend you and not be able to connect with you in connection. He said 14 years. For 14 years, uh, you need a lifelong commitment, a lifelong friendship. Uh, not, 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 not. Yo, yo, I'm mad at you now. Now I'll friend you and I'll that's all and go and everybody go. No, 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 no. no. You need a Barnabas who is going to stick with you, who is going to be with you in the tough time, in the hard time, in the time of joy, in the time of pain, in the time of sorrow, in the time of in a time of the valley, in a time on the mountain, in a time in a pine, uh, uh, a friend who is going to be able to get on the bus with you uh, and also will, will be able to be with you in the limousine and be able to be with you in the in, in, in a fun uh, um, uh, uh, convertible not, not just the one who want to be with you in, 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 in the uh, nice car and don't want to join the train or the bus with you amen in the name of Jesus, you need such a connection. We don't need the hypocrites, the hypocrite. No, 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 no. Galatians chapter 2, verse 13. Galatians chapter 2, verse 13. Galatians chapter 2, verse 13 said, The rest of the Jews joined him in hypocrisy with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. Say, Lord, I'm not going to be among the hypocrites in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, expose, oh Lord, expose every hypocrite around me. Lord, open my eyes and give me discernment to be able to see them hypocrites uh, and, and those, those backstabbers and those gossips and those enemies uh, and, and friends of my enemies and, and those uh, who, who, who come here just to, just to find out what I'm doing and then, then they go gossip and they go tear me down behind me. No, 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 no hypocrisy. God's going to expose every hypocrite, every hypocrite and uh, hypocrisy. No, 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 no. In the name of Jesus, Galatians 2 verse 13, you ain't going to be joining an hypocrite. 
You see, there's a lot of hypocrisy in the body of Christ and hypocrisy in the, in the church and hypocrisy in the pre ministries and ministers talking one bad about the others and all that. And when they see you, oh, God bless you, Bishop, God bless you, man of God, and all that. But by the Spirit of God, you know they're hypocrites. Hypocrites of the highest order. They're going to put on a nice collar and a robe and all that. They're a hypocrite under the gown. And then go, go and expose all them hypocrites in the name of Jesus Christ. All they do is talk bad about you, talk bad, 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 bad and all that gossip and say terrible things. And they see your smile, she smile to you. Lord, punish the devil. Now I'm going to show you some groups in the church and some dangerous groups that you must avoid in the church of God. Yes, they're in the church of God. I'm not talking about how then, and if the ministry of encouragement, you're going to expose them also, but in the spirit of love. And don't you be a part, don't you be a part of them in the name of Jesus. Don't you be a part of anybody, any, any, any kind of hypocrisy. No, no, no. And the Bible says uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 20, the groups in the church, the number one groups, uh, that was at that church in the church in the seven churches of Asia, the uh, seven churches of, uh, uh, it said Revelation chapter 2 verse 20, and he said, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. The first group you must avoid in the church is the group of the Jezebel. You know, in the church system, we have the ushers, we got the choir and the praise band and, and the prayer team and all the deacons and all the elders and all the ch children department and all the, all the whatever other units and the technicals and the, and the instrumentalists and all that. Those are the structures and ministry we got in church. But there are also the spiritual ones. And there was a Jezebel. He said there was a Jezebel in that church. And he said, I know we're standing. I got that. And when we talk about Jezebel, we're not just talking about Jezebel. That was Jezebel of Herb in the, in the Old Testament. It's, it could be Jezebel, could be a Jezebel man, a Jezebel woman. It's Jezebel, it's a spirit. And, and, and uh, we had a bishop that said, we preached for some time. They said, ain't nothing like a Jezebel spirit. No but he was still controlled by Jezebel spirit all around in his ministry. There is a Jezebel spirit, brother. It's a Jezebel spirit, Bishop. And you're going to be in the spirit of God to know that there's the Jezebel. And this church, it said, they did not see that there was Jezebel in there. Hypocrites. And the first group you must avoid, don't be a part of them, is the Jezebel and the church of God. And the next group you must avoid is the Deuter Priest. Deuter Priest, you're going to read Todd John, Todd John chapter 9. Third John, uh, third John 1 chapter, third John verse 9 to 10. Third John verse 9 to 10. He said, I deal to priest group. He said, I wrote to the church, but deal to priest who love it to have the preeminence among them, receiveth not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember these which he doeth, prating against us with malicious word, and not content therewith, neither, neither, it's talking about the Duty priest. Neither does he himself receive the brethren and forbidden them that they that them that would and casted them out of the church. Now the duty priest. They have been in that ministry. They're not gonna help nobody. They're not gonna bless nobody. And when people come in the church, uh, they run them out of the church. Uh, you're gonna get those Josephine out. Uh, you're gonna get those devils out of the church in the name of Jesus. Uh, when somebody comes, they just want to lord over everybody. They're in control of the ministry and, uh, and then they, they want to tell the pastor and tell the leadership what to do. And when you cannot follow what they feel that they uh, what it, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna say the bad things about you and turn about you. The deotropists. Uh, and that they don't want no church to grow. They don't want no new people coming. They just want to be there and be and be the the, the, the mother of the church. And the, and they say they are the elders and the fathers of the church. And they're in control of it. That's the spirit of deotropists. They're going to send them out and cut them out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so dangerous. So dangerous spirit. And so poisonous. So poisonous uh, people. And all they do, they, they, they just spend uh, uh, malicious words, malicious all. Third John verse 9 to 10. Malicious words. They, 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 they begin to gossip in the church. Uh, the theater priest must get out in the name of Jesus. If you're going to be in ministry, you're going to pray, Lord, uh, uh, expose every theater priest, uh, expose every Jezebel, 
and I'm out in the name of Jesus. If they're not going to change, if they're not going to change, they're going to hinder people. They are hindering spirit, hindering spirit. They're not planted. They're going to hinder people. All they talk about is how they look or how to bring the pastor down. And, 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 and they don't know the covenant God got with you. They don't know the vision and the assignment God told you and called you and what to do. They, they're going to stand and say, yeah, yeah, we, we're the committee. And what they say and then hinder the things and the move of God. No. They're going to cast them out in the name of Jesus. They never encourage you. They, they, they're going to lead to the next group. The ham, ham groups in Genesis 9. Genesis 9, 20 to 27. The group of ham. Genesis 9. It, it, in the group of ham, what do they do? The Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis 9, 20 to 27, it says this one day will expose your nakedness. The day you find yourself in a shameful heart, they will tell everybody your weakness. And they will be happy to expose your flaw. And, and the Bible says the curse of ham, it, it was a misnomer, and it was supposed to be cursed than the curse of Canaan. And, and, and he saw his father was drunk. Noah was drunk, uh, and he exposed them. And the Bible said the two other brothers went in the backwards and they covered their father and they got a curse. They're going to expose Ham. going to say, oh, even the things you didn't do. Do you know they said the bishop did that? Uh, you know that the prophetess and, the, and this, that, they, they, you know they got, they, they go, they're not going to be together again. They, 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 they're going to divorce. Uh, you know this, they did that, that. We shut up their mouth and shut the devil off. Uh, devil is a liar. The ham group, they're going to expose your nakedness and say shameful things about you and expose uh, every weakness about you. Now the next group you're going to see is the group of Thomas. Thomas group, John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. John chapter 20, the 24 to 20. The Thomas group, they walk with you. They don't really believe in you. They are there with you. And Thomas was among the 12 apostles, the first apostles of Jesus. Thomas, the Bible called him Didymus. He was Didymus. John, John 20, 24 to He said Thomas who was Didymus. For whatever reason, he wasn't there with Jesus. They wouldn't come to fellowship. They wouldn't come to meetings when they ought to be. They wouldn't come in the fasting. They wouldn't come in the consecration. They wouldn't come to the revival. But they want to take the center place on Sunday and they want to be there. They want to be on the high, on the, on the platform, on the on the pulpit, and, and, and they wouldn't give a tithe, they wouldn't give a contribution, they wouldn't even give no support, no encouragement, but they want to be, and, and, and about, he said, no, I don't believe you all, I don't believe Peter, I don't believe all you, you, John and James, and I don't believe you all, I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I'm going to wait right there until he comes back, uh, and I'm going to see him, and I'm going to put my hand right in his, in his nail, and put my hands on his feet where he was nailed, and that's when I'm going to believe they don't believe in you. They don't believe. Uh, he walked with Jesus for three and a half years. He saw Jesus uh, raise Lazarus in John 11. He saw Jesus uh, raise the Jairus daughter. He saw Jesus uh, met the widow of Nain uh, when the, the son, the holy son, he got uh, was dead and they would carry him to the grave to bury him. Uh, he saw Jesus raised. Uh, the son of the widow of Nain and say, woman, weep not anymore. Weep not and have your son back. He saw Jesus provide uh, that little boy's lunch uh, and turn it to feed the 5,000 men, uh, not counting women uh, 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 and not counting the children. And there was 12 baskets left. Uh, he said, gather the fragment that nothing be lost. Uh, and they gather all that. Uh, and, 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 and he saw all that he saw he fed the five thousand he saw he fed the four thousand he saw he opened the height of the blind uh, he opened the height of the uh, the deaf and the lame and the crippled and all the he, he did so mighty walks and every great things and he saw in john chapter 2 when he went in the canal of galilee the bible says and jesus was there and all his disciples was there the fourth function that he had uh, 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 and mary was there and they had no more wine and he saw how he he he, he, he turned the wine in the, in, the, in the water in the wine and and mary said whatever he tells you to do do it and believe it that's the word of god that whatever god tells you to do preacher do it whatever god tells you to do don't you don't you go by the thomas they're going to talk you out of the plan of god they're going to talk you out of the visions of god he said until i see i'm going to see him i'm going to put my hand i'm going to put my hand in the and you know where that that soldier chalk him on the on the side i'm going to put my hands in there and jesus had him john chapter 20 20 verse 24 to 29 and Jesus had him and said, okay, and he came to him, 
And he said, blessed are those who don't believe, who don't, who don't see, but yet they believe. You don't have, but the walk of faith and believing, you don't have to see. you got to believe before you see it. And what you see and you believe, the Bible says, no, believe it. You're going to believe him and you're going to see him. You need the people of faith. You need the people who are going to say, yes, preacher, we're going to go on that project. And God who has called you to do it is going to make us as we're going to support you and we're going to join you and we're going to help you. We're going to be a Barnabas to you. He said in that Acts chapter 4 verse 32 to 37 and they was there and they encouraged him. They encouraged him and they called him the son of encouragement and he was there. He was there to pick Paul, the son of Sarsus. He believed in him and those people, the Thomas group, they don't believe. They're going to be critical. You're going to be analyzing everything. You know, we ain't got much money in the bank. We ain't got no money. Uh, I ain't going to give that project. I ain't going to do that. And this, they can delay the vision. They can delay and, and, and delay themselves in the struggle and bother the people. And they don't believe no nothing. Get out of there, Thomas. Get out of there, Didymus. You can be with Jesus three years and a half and being with the other apostles and see all the mighty miracles and see blind Bartimaeus come and receive his sight. And John chapter 9, we was born blind for 40 years and he received his sight and all the mighty miracles of God. And they don't believe. Even when people came to give testimony of how you prayed and they were delivered and all those, they still don't believe you. If you're going to be in church and you won't believe, come and get out of there. I believe the grace of God can come for change in this season in the name of Jesus. And we have the last group and among the disciples also was he, the Judas group. Judas, you know who Judas was. Judas group. Next group is Judas group. Judas. And you know who Judas is. Uh, John chapter 12. John chapter 12. The Bible says in John chapter 12, after Lazarus was raised, and, and, and they had a party for Jesus, John chapter 12. And Mary began to worship and began to bless the Lord. And Judas came and said, uh, uh, John chapter 12, uh, Judas group. And he came and said, you know, why is he going to waste that, 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 that alabaster box, alabaster oil? We can sell that for 300 dinary. That is the wages of the, he already analyzed everything and he said that's the liberal's wage for the whole year. Why is he going to waste that? Uh, we're going to give it to the poor. We're going to sell it and give it to the poor. We cannot do that project right now. We, we, we got we to gotta do all the things now. We cannot help the preacher right now. We, we, we're doing all the things right now. We, we cannot do that. We're going to sell it. Bible said not because he loved the poor, but because he was a thief, uh, and he's always stolen from the poor, uh, because he was the treasurer, he's the one that kept the bank, uh, the, the, the bank of the of Jesus, uh, no wonder when the, they got in a city, and the tax collector say you must pay your taxes before you get in, that Judas was nowhere to be found, he didn't got no money in the poor, uh, because he's stolen all the money, and he's used it upon himself, uh, and Jesus said, well Peter, you're going to go to the sea, and you're going to hope on the mouth of the first fish that you catch uh, and you're going to get the money and we're going to be saved from this tax collector's embarrassment and delay and shame uh, because Judas has stolen all the money. He's stolen all the money. John chapter 12, he said, he was a thief and he's always stolen from the past, not because he cared for the poor. Say, Lord, I expose every thief that is always taken from me and stolen from me and hindering me. You're going to share your vision with them. They say, no, 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 no. You can do that now. No, you can do that. You can do that. You sure God spoke to you? God didn't confirm it to me. You can shut the devil off. I do, you don't need nobody's confirmation when God speaks to you. When God speaks to you, the word of the Lord is final. The word of the Lord is supreme. The word of the Lord is ultimate above every other word. It don't matter what we ever confirm it. It don't matter who don't confirm it. It don't matter who support it. It don't matter who don't support it. You're going to get all the Judas is carried for 30 pieces of silver. They're going to steal. And he sold the master for 30 pieces of silver. There are Judas God going to expose in your life. Uh, they're selling your vision out. They tell you, well, you can do that. But they, they're going to be pursuing the same thing. Uh, they'll be stealing revelation from you. You're going to say, Lord, expose every Judas uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and let them hang themselves if they're not going to repent. Uh, let them hang themselves. Let them get out of the way in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the devil entered. The devil entered into Judas. The devil entered 
entered into him and he went to the chief priest and all them uh, and said what are you going to give me if I'm going to expose him uh, say Lord help me with the power of your Holy Spirit uh, that no devil will enter into me that no devil will be able to penetrate me I shut the door of my heart against the enemy Lord you are my all in all you have my absolute heart you have my spirit body and soul and no devil is allowed in my house uh, no devil is allowed around me no devil is welcome around me and I'm not going to tell I'm not going to I'm not going to betray them betrayers the betrayers Lord expose them in the name of Jesus and the same spirit is demonstrated in the in the whole testament in the whole testament the Gehazi Gehazi group uh, Gehazi was uh, was was sec, uh, um, uh, first first king chapter 15 the first king or second king let me check my scripture first king chapter 15 I mean chapter 5 sorry first 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 king chapter 5 uh, let me just check my scripture it's going to be it's going to be second king chapter 5 for the Gehazi group second king chapter 5 second king chapter 5 second king chapter 5 and the Bible second kings chapter 5 the Bible says uh, after Naaman, Naaman had gone in and Elisha, the prophet, would not even see him. And then he said to himself, the Gehazi group, he said, I said, my master just let this Syrian army go after we healed him of leprosy. And he said, he chased after him. He chased after Naaman. And he went after Naaman. And he said, you know, there's my mother, mother, some people just came now and the prophet needs this and need that and all that. There are people who lie in the name of prophecy. They lie and lie and lie and lie in the name of the minister and lie in the name of the ministry and they go about saying things that they don't know. And the prophet said, you think my spirit didn't go with you? You see, my spirit didn't see you when you'd run after the Naaman and took some things and lied. That's why you got to be in the spirit. And you got to walk in the spirit. And he said, is it a time? Is it a time? Is it a time? That's uh, Second King chapter 5. Second King chapter 5. Um, Second King chapter 5 verse 20. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Look, my master has this this Naaman, the Syrian, while not receiving from the hands of the, what he brought. But as the Lord leaves, I will run after him and take something from him. There are people who, as the Lord leaves, will run after the, the wrong thing. You're going to say, Lord, expose everyone running after the wrong thing in the name of Jesus, lying in the name of the Lord. Lord, expose them in this season. And he said, all is well. No, all is not well. Then he went on. And he said in verse, uh, verse, verse 24, he said, when he came to the citadel, he took them from the hand and stole them away and hid them and let the man go and he departed. These things you're hiding, God's going to expose them in the name of Jesus. And then when he went in and stood before his master, Elisha, and said to him, where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, your servant did not go anywhere. Liars, that God's going to expose every liar, every lying, lying, liar in the name of Jesus. Liar, liar, liar. God exposed them liars in the name of Jesus. Then he said to them, did not my heart go with you? Another translation would say, did not my spirit go with you? Verse 26, when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you, is it time to receive money and to receive clothing and olive crews and vineyard and sheep and oxen and females, male and male servants? He said, therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence as white as snow. When the people lie, when they do all the cutting corners, they, they put themselves at the risk of leprosy. Leprosy, they will look at Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12, Bible talks about Miriam. Miriam and Aaron, and they began to gossip, they began to backstab uh, Mo Moses and said, why he married, who he married, was they? God speak to him, uh, God speak also to us. Uh, and Numbers chapter 12, Numbers chapter 12, and God had it, and God had it, uh, and Numbers chapter 12, he said, Now Miriam and Haran spoke against Moses because the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman, so they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord had it. 
The Lord hears what you do. The Lord sees those things. And if you're an encourager, the Lord hears it. If you're an encourager, the Lord sees it. If you're helping other people, the Lord sees it. They don't need to be good to you. They don't need to repay you good. But God is the rewarder. God is the one that God bless you. God is the one that you're doing the good thing to. And when they do bad, when they gossip, when they speak against you, when they chase and lie in the name of the Lord, God also sees that and God's going to reward them. God's going to judge them. And the Bible says uh, the Lord came down in a pillar of clouds, verse 5, and numbers 12, 5. And in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miron, and they both went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with Moses, my servant is the faithful in all of his house, and I speak to him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark things. And he says the forms of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was arose against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron turned towards Miriam, and there she was, a leper. If you don't want to be a leper like Miriam, if you don't want to turn to a leper like uh, Naaman, the Naaman group, then you're going to ask the Lord and you're going to encourage people and not speak damnation to your soul. Now I'm going to talk about the last group, uh, the second to the last group now, the Absalom group. You know the story of Absalom in the book of uh, First King, of uh, Samuel. The Absalom group. Absalom group. First Samuel chapter, second Samuel chapter 17. Absalom group, second Samuel chapter 17. Now you're gonna say the Absalom group, they're the one they're waiting on you. They wanna they wanna plot a coup. They wanna plot a coup and take you out of ministry and take your place and take your position. Second Samuel chapter 17. And Absalom was the son of David, and David was not dead yet, and David was still the king and was still ruling and was still on the throne. But Absalom was already making himself a king, and you're in ministry, and they'll be there, they'll be talking and making, you may, maybe they're just a, a self-fellowship leader, and they're going to be Absalom and take all the people and go, go start their own church somewhere, the church of Absalom. Church of Absalom. But you're going to pray that, Lord, every plan of Absalom and every counsel of Ahitopel, there's a Ahitopel group. Ahitopel, they, they come all, they, they, Absalom and Ahitopel, they walk together. They come, Ahitopel was an advisor to David. But they're going to turn their back and they're going to be advising the Absalom. And the Bible says, God turned the wise counsel of Ahitopel for Absalom, it turned it into foolishness. You're going to say, Lord, every strategy, every negative thing that they've said, every evil plot against me and my destiny and my ministry and my future, and everything that they're doing and plotting, every wise counsel of Ahitopel, Lord, turn them into foolishness in the name of Jesus. And then they have follow group. They must go. And they're the one, they will tell the people, they're the, they're the one that, oh, you know, the preacher, the, the bishop them preach so good. He, he, he's not preaching any well. He's not preaching good anymore. He, I can preach better than that. I can do better than that. So, you know, the, the, the praise leader, the praise team, he, he, he can sing anymore. He can dance anymore. I can do better than that. And this Absalom, they've been still the heart of the people. I said, what, when, when you was in the, uh, uh, in the hospital, did a pastor come to you? Did a pastor come to pray for you? Did a pastor come to be with you? When, when, did he come in there? And they be, they be, they be planting discord and planting, uh, 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 strategizing out and, and plotting. Uh, and they were trying to prove a point that uh, I'm, I'm, you, they're better than you. They don't want to take your calling and your ministry. But you're going to stay focused on the Lord, the Absalom group. Uh, and now the next group I'm going to talk about, I'm going to just stop right there. Is the company of Korah, Data, and Habiru. Uh, Numbers, Numbers chapter 16. 
the company of Korah and Dathan and Abiram. The rebellious group. The Korah group. Korah. Korah group. You know, Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. This one that will challenge your authority. They begin to challenge your authority. Number 16. They begin to challenge your authority. They believe uh, uh, that at, at the same level that they, 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 they think they, they, they're the same with you. You appointed them elders. You appointed and anointed them as pastor of, of the uh, ministers and ushership. But now they, 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 they got their head bigger than their neck. And they're going, they're going, they, 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 because they, they got some little anointing and they're praying and there is a little deliverance and healing. Now they, they think they're bigger than you that anoint and train them in ministry or counsel them or, or, or confirm them in the calling and license them and the Korah group. And they're going to be against you and say you're honoring the man of God too much. You're, you're doing all that. He said now, number 16. He said now the sons of Ether, the, Kor, or the son of Korah, the son of uh, Levi, the, and with that and Abiram, and the sons of Eliab, number 16, verse 1. And on the son of Pele, the sons of Reuben, took men. They're going to take men and women. They're going to take them and bring them together. Numbers, numerous, capitulous, kingsley. Particulous uno. And they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation and representatives of the congregation and men of renown. They're going to steal all the people, men of renown. The people they know, they bring the big tide in the church. The people who, who, pick the, who support the project and the offering and bless the pastor with a car and bless the bishop with a house. Uh, and they're going to go after the men of renown. They go in after all the men who, who got some, some dollars in, and some financial position and some big companies. And a company of Korah, Dutton, and Habiru. But you know, if you read the whole story, the Bible says, and, Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the lost side? The lost side is the side you gotta be. Numbers chapter 16. You're gonna look for that verse. I, I, I'm rounding up now. He said, Who is on the lost side? And Moses said, If the Lord do a new thing, and he did a new thing, and all the 250 and all the people that they have connived and conspire and conspiracy with the Dutton and Korah and Abiru, and they all went in the grave, the land opened up and swallowed them, and they went straight to hell that day. Don't you join the rebellious people. Don't you join the company of Korah. Don't you join the company of Nathan and Abiram. Because they're going down. They're going down in the name of Jesus. You don't want to go down with them. That you want to go and stand on the lost side. You want to stand and support the preacher. You want to stand and support them. The spirit of prophecy. In the spirit of encouragement. And be a Barnabas. And support the man of God. And support the set woman and the women of God uh, and support the family of the preachers uh, and be a blessing to them uh, in your prayer, in your offering, in your blessing financially, in your service, uh, in your volunteering, in your commitment uh, that you will support them, uh, that you will lift them up in prayer, that you will encourage them uh, and you will not be like the Hananias and Sapphira. Hananias and Sapphira, chapter 5 of the book of Acts uh, and the Bible said they sold their land also because they saw what the uh, uh, Barnabas and Joseph, the son of encouragement, was doing, uh, and they sold their land also. Acts chapter 5, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, and they, they, they lied to the Holy Spirit. They lied to the man of God, uh, and the Bible said they both dropped dead. Uh, we're talking about also the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, we're talking about the, 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 the company of, uh, uh, in the book of Nehemiah, the Sambalat and Tobiah. The Sambalat and Tobiah and the Geshum, uh, they are everywhere, even in the body of Christ. Uh, the Sambalat and Tobiah, they want to bring down Nehemiah. They want to bring down the builders. Uh, you're going to say, Lord, I need to be a builder of your kingdom. Uh, I don't want to be among the company of the Sambalat and Tobiah. I don't want to be among the company of the Noadiah. He said the false prophet, just like he said in Revelation 2.20, of the, 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 the false prophet of Jezebel uh, and all and all the prophet of Baal and, 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 and all the idols and all the negative spirit and all the contaminated polluted spirit of the Jezebel. The company of Sambalat, the book of Nehemiah, Sambalat, Tobiah, 
and they, 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 they all they want to do is pull down and distract the, the calling and the ministry and draw you back. They, you're trying to build and hand me another brick and build the vision and build the wall and build a standard for the Lord and build the calling and the vision that will carry on to the, the next generation and reach other people. But the Sambalat and Tobiah, no, no. The Sambalat and Tobiah and Noadiah, the Bible calls that the false prophet said in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. All they want to do is they're going to bring you down. They want to bring you down. But I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, uh, nothing is going to bring you down in this season. Uh, what the Lord has called you to build uh, is going to help you to build uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 9. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 9. He said, nevertheless we made our prayer to our God uh, and because of them uh, we set a watch uh, and a watch against them uh, day and night. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Nehemiah chapter 4, and verse 8, he said, All them that conspire, all them that conspire, and all them that conspire together to come and, and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. All them will create confusion. All them will create confusion. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 8. Uh, they create confusion. They want to attack you. They want to bring you down. The Absalom, the Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, the do Thomas Thomas, and, 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 and all them, uh, the Judas Iscariot, and all them. Uh, God's going to expose them, and God's going to give you the victory in the name of Jesus. Uh, say, Lord, help me that expose anyone who want to bring me down in the city. Uh, any Kambalat and Tobiah. Anyone will see what God is building in my life. Uh, building in my family. Building my spouse. Uh, building my wife. Uh, building my husband. Uh, building my children. Uh, building the future. Building the calling and the ministry and supporting the prophet. Uh, and all they want to do is talk bad and create confusion. Uh, and all they want to do is bring down the wall uh, and say and despise uh, all the things that God is doing and bring affliction uh, and bring frustration and gossip uh, and confusion we cancel every evil spirit uh, and every negative spirit uh, and every negative energy is uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, and we decree and declare that the hand of god uh, and the blessings of god uh, we give you the victory on every side uh, in the name of jesus christ nobody's going to bring you down in the name of jesus christ uh, isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 he said you will keep in perfect peace uh, those whose mind uh, is steadfast uh, because they trust in you. Isaiah chapter 23 and verse 3, verse uh, 26 and verse 3, we decree and declare that the Lord will keep you in peace in this season. You will not be in pieces. Uh, you will not be fragmented uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 118 and verse 14. Psalm 118 and verse 14. I decree and declare that the Lord is your strength uh, and the Lord will be your defense. Uh, defense against every position defense against anyone who want to create confusion uh, and he has become your salvation uh, and you will shout the child of victory from one one and verse 14 and verse 15 uh, you will shout a shout of joy you will shout a shout of victory and resound in the tent of righteousness uh, the lord is right hand uh, the lord's right hand has done mighty things he's going to do mighty things for you he's going to do great things for you the lord's right hand is lifted high and the lord's right hand has done mighty things uh, greater things uh, and he will deliver you from every forces of the enemy ah and everyone who is walking against you, everyone who is speaking against your arising and your shining and the glory and the beauty of God, God's going to put them down and God's going to put them to shame and God's going to give you the victory in the name of Jesus. Uh, Psalm 118 from verse 14, 15 and 16. By the hand of the Lord we do mighty things. Uh, we do great things uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse 114 he said you are my refuge and my shield i have put my hope in your word and in verse 115 he said away from me you evil doers that i might keep the command of the lord every evil doers get away in the name of jesus christ psalm 119 verse 25 he said i am lay lord in the door and preserve life according to your word god is going to preserve god is going to preserve in the name of jesus christ he said 
verse 50, Psalm 119, verse 119, verse 50, my comfort in my suffering is that the promise preserve my life. God is going to preserve your life and the adversary and the negative groups and all those Gehazi and all those uh, Miriam and all those people who are conspired against you, who want to create confusion and create a, a, a situation that wasn't there, that the, that the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and there is no confusion. For God is not the author of confusion. In the name of Jesus Christ, he said in Psalm 120, Psalm 120 and verse 1, he said, I call on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. I decree and declare, God will answer you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk and close right now in the name of Jesus on the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30, and the Bible says that David had a, 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 a Ziegler. First Samuel chapter 13, Ziegler. And David, David was there with his wives and, uh, and, his, and all the men that was with him. And the Bible said the Amalekite came in. The Amalekite came in and they took everyone. They took everything. They took everything and they burned down Ziegler. They burned down Ziegler and they took everything away. And the Bible says, uh, and David began to weep and all the men began to weep and everybody began to cry and everybody began to weep uh, until the men began to talk of stoning him. Uh, when you find yourself in a situation, uh, and all the people begin to mourn, and other people, and what the devil has plotted, and um, he begin to plan how to kill you, how to stone you. And the Bible says, uh, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, for Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6 and, uh, and 6 and 7. Uh, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, and David began to call on the priest. Uh, you go run to your Moses. Uh, you go run to your the Barnabas. Uh, you go run to the priest of the Lord. Uh, and he called on the priest uh, Habiat. Uh, and he asked uh, that Habiat, uh, the priest, the son of Abim Ahimelech. Uh, please bring me the airport. You must bring the word. Let the word bring you the word of God. The help of God is, uh, is, is uh, uh, in the Old Testament, the way to seek the face of the Lord. Uh, and the Bible says, the brother help of the Abiata brought the help to him. And David inquired of the Lord. But for first thing he did, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, sometimes there may not be some Barnabas to be there for you. Sometimes there may not be some sister Barnabas to be there for you. Sometimes there may not be brother Barnabas to encourage you. Sometimes the preacher, the bishop himself might be down sometimes there might not be somebody who is going to pray for you but you got to come to the point uh, and grow in the word of god uh, and encourage yourself in the word of god he said david encourage himself in the lord uh, encourage yourself in the lord uh, encourage yourself in the lord uh, encourage yourself in the lord uh, say the devil you cannot bring me down uh, god has always been there for me and david said uh, and for someone 17 he said, now the God will give me the lion and the bear. The Lord will give me the lion and the bear. He's going to give me this Goliath. And he encouraged himself in the Lord. You got to come to the point of encouraging yourself in the Lord. Because sometimes the encouragement you're expecting from some people, it might not come. They might bring you down. They might try to encourage you, but they don't know what they're doing. Like the Bible talks about the friends of Job. The friends of Job, they were called miserable comforters. They came to encourage him. They had a good intention, but their words betrayed them. And their action, and they were bringing him down. And say, you know, you must have seen. You know something, uh, God, God didn't bring this on you God then let this and then and they began to bring the uh, job down and they were miserable comfort as the Bible say but in the end in chapter 42 Job chapter 42 and God began to speak to to Job and in verse 10 the Lord told him to bless them the Lord told him to pray for them so sometimes we ain't praying for the enemies to die we ain't praying for them to die we're praying that God will set a table before you Psalm 23 we're praying that God will set a table for you in the midst of your enemy that God will do amazing things that they will see the glory of God that they will see the wonders of God Psalm 126 said when the Lord turned again the captivity he didn't saw it they saw the glory of God, they saw the beauty of God, they saw the wonders of God, and all those groups, all those people we talked about, they're going to see the work of God and the might of God, that God is going to do great and mighty things in your life, they ain't going to die, we're praying for the enemy to die, we're praying that the glory of God will happen in them, and Job chapter 42 and verse 10, he said after Job had prayed for his friends, you're going to pray for them that despise you, you're going to pray for them that are walking against you, you're going to pray that the Lord should reveal them, and the Lord should help them to repent, or otherwise 
Christ the Lord will make them to see the glory of God and they'll be put to shame in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said the Lord turned again the captivity of Job. The Lord turned around the story of Job and all the struggles of Job and all the troubles of Job and all that he has lost. And God gave him double, twice as much everything that he has ever lost. I decree God is changing your situation, giving you double everything you've lost, bringing double everything you have been brought down, bringing double in this season, in this second month. God is bringing double to you, bringing double in the name of Jesus. Therefore, your shame. You will receive double for the pain you will receive double for your shame god will give you double double of joy double of peace double of increase double of blessing double of finances in the name of jesus job chapter 42 verse 10 he said and the latter hand of job the hand of job was more glorious the hand of job was more better than the beginning of Job. They thought they, 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 that you are hand in poor. They thought that you're going to hand in shame. They thought you're going to hand in sorrow. But God said, no, I'm turning it around. And greater is coming. I'm going to shout, greater is coming. Somebody said, oh, the God is not over. It's not over with me yet. God is not concluded with me yet. He's going to do amazing things. He's going to do mighty things. You're going to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. So Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. He said, they that trust in the Lord, they that hope in the Lord, will renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord, those that encourage themselves in the Lord. Isaiah 40 verse 31. He said, they will soar and sink like eagles, and they will run and not be weary, and they will walk and not be faint. When you're walking and you're fainting, you're going to say you encourage yourself in the Lord in the name of Jesus. And you're going to soar like an eagle, and you go fly like an eagle. You're going to soar through the storm, in the midst of a storm, in the high of a storm. You alone are my anchor. You alone are my strength. You alone are my God. You alone will help me through. You alone will bear me on eagle's wind in the the name of Jesus Christ uh, and give him the glory and give him the praise uh, in the name of Jesus Isaiah chapter 43 Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2 it said when you pass through the water then I will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you and when you walk through the fire you will not be burned and the flames will not set you ablaze uh, all the fire of the enemy will not burn you. Everywhere they try to burn you and burn your name and speak bad about you, the Lord will give you victory. When you pass through the waters, uh, you're going to pass through the waters. Uh, the Lord will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, uh, the rivers will not sweep over you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, it said in the Proverbs 18, Proverbs 18 of verse 10, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong power. The name of the Lord is a fortified power. Power. The righteous run in it and they are saved. You go run in the name of the Lord. Run in the name of the Lord. God got the victory for you. The name of the Lord, a strong power. It says Psalm 31 and verse 24. Be strong. Psalm 31 verse 24. It says be strong and take care and all you will hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. Help is coming for you. Hope in the Lord. Your miracle is coming for you. Hope in the Lord. God is going to make a way for you. Hope in the Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he said all the hope in the Lord. Uh, there is help coming for you. And trust not in your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all, with all, with all, with all your heart. Uh, and lean not on your own understanding. It's time you quit leaning on your own understanding. It's time you quit walking it out on your own. It's time you quit chasing after the people who will put you down. Who will not encourage you. It's time to lean upon the Lord. Uh, and in all your ways you submit yourself to him. Uh, and he will make your path straight. Uh, he will Will give you victory it will make a way for you where there seems to be no way in the name of jesus christ uh, second corinthians chapter one verse three second corinthians chapter one verse three he said praise to the lord god our father of our lord jesus christ uh, the father of compassion uh, god is a god of compassion it don't matter what they did against you it don't matter what the sambalat and the tobayan whatever they've said uh, he said god is a god of compassion uh, and the god of all comfort uh, and second corinthians chapter 1 
1 and verse 3 and 4, he said, who comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God, with the encouragement we receive from God, with the comfort we receive from God. We go and encourage others. Don't you be a, 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 a naysayer, Sambala, Tobiah, you know, Thomas and Jezebel. I'm not bringing people down and bringing them down, causing confusion. No, 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 no. He said, 2 Corinthians 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. Who comfort us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves are received from God. In the name of Jesus. What is the comfort that we have received from God? Psalm 55 verse 22. Psalm 55 verse 22. Psalm 55 verse 22. He said, Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. And he will never let the righteous be shaken. Cast your care upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, uh, give him the praise and give him the glory. Say, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed be God. In the name of Jesus. I believe somebody is blessed today. Be an encourager. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, where are all my encouragers in the name of Jesus? Give them the praise and give them the glory. So I refuse to put on the garment of tribulation. I refuse to put on the garment of uh, discouragement. I refuse to put on the garment of shame and frustration. I refuse to put on uh, 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 the, the, the naysayers. No, but I will put on the garment of praise and I will... Walk in the ministry of Barnabas, in the ministry of encouragement, in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to close with this, like I said in the beginning. The ministry of encouragement does not mean that you encourage the negative things. Does not mean that you encourage the bad things. Does not mean that you condone unholiness and unrighteousness and stupid. The ministry of encouragement means that even when you got to pick correction. You do it in the spirit of love. In the spirit of love. In the spirit of love. He said, who comfort us with the same comfort that we have received of God. God does not destroy us. God comfort us. God bring consolation. God bring edification. God bring correction. God brings a, a, a restoration. God gives us another chance for the ministry of uh, encouragement. It brings comfort and correction in love. And the uh, Bible says, not hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. No, 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 no. No. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The Lord help his church. Uh, get rid of all them Jezebel and all the Judas Iscariot and dirty priests in the name of Jesus. I believe somebody's been blessed today. And my time is far gone and we got to get off this broadcast right now. I'm never out of the world, but I'm out of time right now. And God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And if you're just joining the Winning World broadcast for the first time, I pray the blessings of God be over you. I appreciate everybody. Please go ahead and uh, um, try to help us share this uh, on in your timeline. Share it in your timeline. Share it in the groups. And God bless you. Please share in the groups. Share in the timeline. And God bless you. And encourage the prophet in the name of Jesus. God bless you. And we look forward to hearing from you on 567-560-3223. In the name of Jesus, go out there and be an encourager to somebody. Go out there and be a blessing to somebody. I'm trying to get in to see uh, everybody's name, everybody who has been on the broadcast with, with, with me today. And God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Um, trying to see the names. Uh, if I don't call your names, well, it's not... Uh, an oversight is just because I can't see everybody's name on my screen. 
But I believe the blessings of God is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, everybody, from wherever you're watching from. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel on Abraham Peters. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, everyone. I'm trying to see everybody's name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Okay. Um, a comment is loading so I can see. Uh, five six seven. Five six zero. Three two two three. Got it. All right, Kathy Arings Egans. God bless you, woman of God, Teresa Walker. Um, a wonderful woman of God, Teresa Hay, and um, um, Angela Pope, uh, Deborah Mueller, Juan Torres, Dios te bendiga, Hermana, Mandy Reinhardt, and Claire Richard, and Carmen, and uh, Woman of God, Lion Kais, Sadia, Jane Crystal, and Pastor Roy, Reverend Roy Colcom from New York. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. And thank you, everybody. If I didn't call your name, but I can't see everybody's name on my screen. And God bless you in the name of Jesus. Um, I'll see you again on Friday with the Holy Spirit Fire Hour. At the Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock to 7 p.m. And I'm doing a series. We started the last time on the School of Prophets. So we're going to continue that. And I hope you join me. God bless you, everybody. And thank you also for coming. God bless you. Have a wonderful. And God bless you all from Reverend Terry and myself. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And we look forward to hearing from you. Great things that God is going to do. In the name of Jesus, give him praise and glory and be an encourager in Jesus' mighty name. We'll see you again. God bless you. Shalom.